Recursion 1, Array 220. Given an array of integers, compute recursively if the array contains somewhere a value following the array by that value times 10. We'll use the convention of considering only the part of the array that begins at the given index. In this way, a recursive call can pass index plus 1 to move down the array. The initial call can pass an index as 0. Okay, so let's go over the sample cases first. So here there is the array 1, 2, 20. There is a 2 followed by a 20, and of course 20 is 2 times 10. Therefore, we can return true. Here there is a 3 followed by a 30, so we can return true. And here there is only one um, value in the array. Of course, if there is only one value, then the, sorry, if there is only one value, then there cannot exist another value following it that is that number times 10. So we can automatically just assume false. Okay, so um, how can we compute this recursively? So following the problem statement suggestions, we can just iterate through an array looking for um, a valid pair. So what do I mean by that? So let's say that we have a val um, sorry we have an array like so. Um, so let's start at the first value. There's a one. The next value is two, and of course two is not ten, so we can continue. Next is two. And the next value after that is 3. 3 is not 20, so we continue. Here there is a 3. The next value is 4, not 30, so we continue. Here there is a 4, and the next value following that is a 40. 40 is 4 times 10, so here we can just return false. I mean, return true. If we make it all the way to the end of the array and we're at this index, then we know that we cannot continue forward because this value, um, being at the last index, means that in the whole entire array, there was never a valid pair. And if and there cannot be a valid pair following because, of course, there's no value here. Therefore, we can just return false if we are at the last index. So let's implement that. First, if, if the array length is less than or equal to 1, then we can automatically return false because this means that a pair cannot, a pair cannot exist. Similarly, we can return false if we are at the last index, because we know that a pair cannot exist from here or anywhere else following. If else, we will just check if the current value times 10 equals the next value. If this is true, we will return true. If not, we will just return, we will just iterate forward and return whatever results from that. And there it is.